Chapter 8 is entitled Personal Life. And this is because we all are affected by society in our personal lives. Unless we live in a cave, we can't escape society. And it's in this aspect that society becomes personal. It is easy to understand how society affects us. If you simply look at the way we drive a car, we must stop at a red light. That's society telling us we must stop. But society also affects us in ways in which are more personal. For example, society impacts on our very bodies, saying what we can and cannot do with them. It even impacts on our own perceptions of what we can do away from society's prying eyes. We may, for example, feel guilt over enjoying our bodies in sexual ways, even when we're not being viewed by society, even when we're shielded from the notion of what we're doing entirely. It is in this sense that we are society, not just part of it by an action of society, not just an agentic member of society, but literally we embody society. And sociology, this may be the study of society, but in this aspect, it is also the study of you. The study of you may not seem as important as the study of the larger consequences of global inequality, but it is the most important field of study to you. Durkheim, for example, as we featured in chapter one, discussed how the you was affected by the very reality of the type of society you belong to. Group membership impacts upon who you are. It is also impacted by human diversity. Men, for example, rarely fear being sexually attacked while going out for an evening night's run. And even if gay men today are accepted and live within a gay-friendly culture, they're far less likely to hold hands or kiss in public. This is because not of a current social norm, but because of the legacy of a traditional social norm which said that gay men do not have the same social freedoms as straight men. Nowhere, however, is the personal made more political than when it comes to the family. And it is here that sociologists can become political, arguing over what roles one should play and what impact those roles might have on their children. Fortunately, it is also here where we as sociologists use data. Data so that we can make determinations about the best outcomes for our children. It has also helped us to bring change to the family. Legal and increasingly social equality exists for multiple types of families. Same-sex families is the most current example. And as the data changes, perhaps proving our old ways of thinking to be inaccurate, so do sociologists' attitudes about those very such matters. Sociologists' attitudes also change when new types of sociologists with different bodily and different social concerns emerge. For example, in the 1970s, we saw the emergence of women into the field of sociology, and women brought with them a panoply of ideas of things that were important to them, things related to the body, things related to the family. And sociology responded to this by understanding the role of feminism within the sociological discipline. It changed sociology. It changed sociology permanently, and it changed it for the better. Feminist sociologists changed the way sociology thought about women, and in the process, they changed the way men thought about women. Feminist sociologies help us understand that what is important to women is important to society, and also, therefore, important to men. And these issues, they're not fully solved. We have not, le we have not reached gender parity, for example. There are biological differences and there are social differences that still need to be resolved. Some of these relate to, for example, pregnancy and the motherhood penalty. But sociology, we are the discipline that is best able to analyze and understand these problems. We are the discipline that can set legal and structural changes into motion to bring greater gender equality for all. This is also the case when it comes to sex. The 1980s saw an influx of sociologists, of gay sociologists, and lesbian sociologists, of sociologists who were interested in sex more generally. By the 1990s, the study of sexuality within a sociological paradigm had started to burgeon. And with this has come a great understanding and decreased stigma of all types of sexual actions and interactions. Sociology, again, has been at the forefront of decreasing stigma in sexual people's lives. 
We conclude chapter 8 by suggesting that the body is social. The social is the body. We are one. We are society. And thus, sociologists in that capacity are very much so like a medical doctor. They help diagnose and prescribe treatments to make the body, ergo society, more functional, healthier, and happier for all.